Hello everybody! It's been a tradition for a few years now for me to automate some of the minigames from New Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo DS using image recognition. And this year's no exception. The minigame I'm going to target this time around is one I attempted to automate all the way back in 2022, and one that fits the season quite well, which is Hide and Boo Seek. In this spooky minigame, there are some boos that wander around the screen, and after a few seconds, the lights go out. Your goal is to then drag the cursor around in an attempt to find all of the boos before the timer runs out. This starts off relatively easy, but becomes increasingly difficult as the levels progress. And this is because the number and speed of boos increase, while the timer becomes less and less forgiving. So, in order to be good at this game, you need a very specific skill, besides destroying the screen on your DS, which is projecting movement. Since the behavior of the boos is the same, regardless of whether the lights are on or not, if you know their speeds and angles when the lights go out, you can roughly determine where they'll end up after some time, since they follow a straight line, maintain their speed, and bounce off the walls. And luckily for us, we're going to rely on a program to do all of this math for us, so we can have extremely accurate calculations. So now that we have a good idea of what needs to be done, let's finally start putting some of these ideas into a program. To get started, I decided it would be good to write some code to identify where the boos are when the lights are on. And this is where image recognition comes into play. The code I'm writing for this minigame is in Python, and I'm using a library called PyAutoGUI to locate two different textures of a boo on the bottom screen of the DS. I made these textures by taking a rectangular slice of an entire boo and rotating one of them for when the boos are facing the opposite direction. If you're wondering why I don't just locate the entire boo, besides being more pixels to search for, since the boo isn't a rectangular shape, the edges will be different depending on what part of the background it's in front of. So, using a smaller subsection means that the program won't have any difficulties determining if it's found the texture or not. So, if I run the program with the minigame open, as long as there's at least one boo moving around in the light, the program can identify it, as evidenced by the console. And, to make this even more apparent, I ported some video writing code from my Fruit Ninja image recognition project to display a square around where the program sees the boos on screen. Alright, so now that the program knows where the boos are located when the lights are on, how do we deal with the lights being off? Well, this is where we need to model the boos' behavior so that we can accurately predict where the boos will end up after the lights go out but we're going to need some important information in order to do this. The two things that we need are a speed and an angle. And luckily, both can be derived if we have the position of a boo from two consecutive frames that don't have the boo bouncing off of a wall. The speed can be determined using the distance formula. Pretty simple. As for the angle, this can be calculated using a trigonometric function called ATAN2, which can find the angle of a hypotenuse of a triangle. So, in our case, the y and x legs of the triangle can be calculated by taking the difference between the boo positions components, aka their y and x values. Now, all of this math is fine and dandy, but there's one big issue to all of this, which is determining what positions go to which boo. Let me give an example. If we have one boo on the screen, then it's really easy for the program to figure out which position should be used each time to create a boo model, since there's only one to choose from. But, once two or more boos are in the equation, we need to do some extra calculations to guess which positions are paired together. As a first instinct, I thought it might be good to use the positions that are closest together across multiple frames to determine which positions to use, but as soon as the boos start overlapping, the program might incorrectly guess which position to use. So, in order to address this issue, I came up with a clever system to deal with this problem, and I'm calling it a corroboration system. Basically, every time that a boo model is able to accurately predict the next position of the boo it's trying to track, a value called corroboration is incremented to show that the model is doing its job accurately. But, if it doesn't correctly guess the position, within a certain range, it will decrease this value. And if it reaches a low enough number, the boom model will be deleted, and the program will have the opportunity to start over again, 
if the number of models is lower than the highest number of textures that it's able to locate. Here's an example of what this looks like. Here we have two boos that are being accurately tracked, shown by the blue squares, but once the two boos intersect with each other, the program incorrectly models one of the boos' positions. But after a few frames, the model is deleted, since it wasn't accurately predicting either boo's movement. Now that our program has all the information it needs for when the lights turn off, it's time to actually deal with the lights turning off. For this, I first added some code that stops searching for boo textures and instead updates the boo models once it's unable to find any more boos on screen. And here's the result. Then the only big thing left to do was to add some code to move the mouse to where the boos are to find them. This is a bit of a tricky thing to do though, because the ideal shape for finding a boo would be to draw a circle where the boo is located. But the library I'm using to move the mouse, Pi Auto GUI, the library I mentioned earlier, only allows for moving along straight lines, which means drawing a circle would take hundreds, if not thousands of lines to do so, which would be incredibly slow. So what I came up with instead is for the mouse to move in a zigzag manner where the boo is located. This requires significantly less lines to be drawn, and can cover a good area when it's done. With the last major part of this puzzle in place, I spent some time tweaking the program to try and get it to run as efficiently and accurately as possible. And here is the final result. I know this program isn't perfect, but I really hope you enjoyed watching this video regardless. If you have any video suggestions you'd like to see me try in the future, let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, thank you guys as always for watching and for your support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye